2008, I wanted to do electronics because I wanted to build a, a flight computer to uh, recover my rocket safely. I went to the hardware store and the owner told me, you just don't simply learn electronics, go home kid. So in this video show, a series, I'm going to show you that you can just do electronics. And we will do that with the active learning module from analog devices. Um, keep in mind, I'm not affiliated with analog devices. I think that their products are great and that's why I'm going to use them here. And on top of that, we have the Adult 2000 kit. We will look into them in a moment. And uh, you might wonder, why don't I just buy an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi? Well, um, when you learn about electronics design, you learn about the basic principles through which circuits operate. Also, you have to keep in mind uh, that um, the signals from our world, they are analog. Typically, they are tiny. You are measuring like microamperes or microvolts. And you cannot just start chopping them in like zeros and ones. So what you have to do is you have to amplify them, you have to filter them, you have to treat, treat them with respect. And um, therefore you need some circuitry to do that. Also, imagine that you are uh, dealing with this kind of like low level signals and on top of that you are driving heavy loads like motors, for example, that create a lot of interference. That's also another challenge and putting everything together into the same circuit is it's an art of its own. Also, um, doing electronics is fun. Uh, it's really satisfying to be able to uh, think out of the box and, and um, build something to fix a problem with the components you already have uh, that's being like versatile. Without further ado, let's look into this kit. The Active Learning Module 2000 is a very versatile tool. It's small. Uh, you have here like a, for a connection for power, micro USB, uh, the, then there are these pin headers. It comes, it's basically like uh, many scientific instruments into one. So we have oscilloscope, function generator, logic analyzer, uh, power supply, spectrum analyzing, analyzer, there are many, many things. And this is great for learning electronics. Keep in mind that this is not going to replace uh, bench top instruments, but it is a great way to get started and then This costs about like two hundred and thirty dollars. So which is about like two hundred euros and this one was a hundred euros So it's like hundred and ten dollars or so and it comes with all kinds of goodies Let's dive into it. So here we have all kinds of like precision circuits from um, JFET um, Operational amplifiers, instrumentation amplifiers, there are logic gates, many, many different kinds of things. Then we have a selection of capacitors, jumper wires, LEDs, phototransistors, there is a bunch of resistors and potentiometers there. We have a speaker, we have uh, power transistors, temperature sensors, bipolar junction transistors, we have a selection also of inductors, and all kinds of things such as uh, transformers, there is there a um, regulator and also we have like many interesting analog sensors such as an analog accelerometer there are um, charge pumps in there and they make them nicely so that these um, surface mount components they are broken into pins so you can use this breadboard to do your prototyping and there is also a microphone What's great about combining these two kits is that you can go to the analog devices website and there you will find the student zone and I'm going to be following those tutorials to teach you about electronics. Uh, without further ado, let's get started with an example. I will show the capabilities of the Adalm 2000 now with a simple circuit. What we have here is the inverting amplifier where the gain is simply minus the feedback resistor divided by the input resistor. In this case we have minus 10 kilo ohms divided by 1 kilo ohm. That is minus 10. Minus 10 means that the output signal will be 10 times the input signal and there is a change of sign. You will see that in a minute. For filtering I have added two ceramic capacitors that are 100 nanofarad, one connected to the plus 5 volts and the other one to minus 5 volts. So looking at the diagram, the inverting input is pin number 2, non-inverting is pin number 3, 
the negative voltage goes to pin number 4, positive voltage to pin number 7, and the output is pin number 6. And this is exactly what I have done here. So what we have here is the input resistor, the 1K, this is the feedback, the 10K, and then I'm feeding in a signal that is 100 millivolts peak to peak at 1 hertz, 1 kilohertz frequency. Let's take a look at the signal now. To visualize the signal, we will be using Scopy, which is this toolbox from analog devices, is free of charge, open source, you can even log data into your computer using this tool. So we begin by connecting to our device, and then we will be powering the inverting amplifier. So we come to the power supply. We enable the plus 5 volts, we enable the minus 5 volts, and now we will generate a signal. Uh, we have a signal that is 100 millivolts peak to peak, so it's plus 50 millivolts minus 50 millivolts, so this range is 100 millivolts, and it's a frequency of 100 kilohertz, so that means that uh, from the moment that it crosses zero to the moment that it crosses zero, there is one millisecond time. We go to the oscilloscope tool and the oscilloscope tools tool allows me to see how the voltage changes over time. So here we can see two signals. Let me stop this for a moment. The orange signal is the input to our inverting amplifier and the purple signal is the inverted in output, the output from our um, amplifier. So what we see here is that the input is 100 millivolts approximately, there is always some noise at a frequency of 1 kilohertz and the output is 10 times that. That is exactly what it should be. It is because the game is 10. That is given by those resistors and then the frequency is preserved is also 1 kilohertz. And um, what we can see here is because it's minus 10, when this is at maximum, this is at minimum, and when this is at minimum, this is at maximum. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I will be making more in the future, showing different analog circuits. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Until next time.